and welcome to The Learning Ladder. Today I'm going to be showing you my almost four-year-old's curriculum for the year 2016-17. Some of it may uh, continue on in 2017 as well, but I'm just going to do it, I'm going to try to do it <laughs> in subject order. Uh, I'm surrounded by boxes right now, so I'm going to try and do it, keep in order, but a few things might get mixed up, we'll see. Anyway, first thing first, we start our daily morning routine with our circle time, and this is the new circle time rug that I got, just letters, uppercase and lowercase on there. It's really bright and colourful and great. For circle time we do our days of the week song, all those kind of things in the morning. She does her morning calendar. So in here we have personal information. It's all blank obviously because I didn't want to fill it out yet. And that's for her to learn her address and phone number. And then this is a practice handwriting her name. You can see how she progresses throughout the year. It goes through all the rest of the year. That's really cute. And then here is her calendar notebook. She's not coloured through yet. So it's really simple. Um, she marks off the day. Once she can actually trace the day, then she'll do that. And then she can just use a marker to mark off the actual date on there. And then we go through today is, tomorrow is, this month is, year is, season, all those kind of things, weather and how she's feeling. We also have another calendar as well um, to go through. I'll show you that in a second, a wooden calendar. And then this is just something that... She, we can do if we feel like doing it in that morning or anything it's kind of a review thing so basically it's in um plastic sheets so she can just use a dry erase marker and it's shapes that she knows so she can trace them we can play different games with it and then there's some letters in there as well again we won't do these every day they're just in in her folder colors that she knows and then numbers and then at the back is just the rest of the year I'm also going to stick in a money sheet, so I'm going to um, take pictures and things of, of various coins and notes that we have so that she can learn to recognise money. I got this uh, calendar from mamaslearningcorner.com. It was only $5 and I think it's great. And this is our actual calendar, uh, which is a Mercer and Doug one. It's really cool because you've got all the information on here, little chart. It's going to be pretty hot because it's boiling today. <laughs> And then there's different activities in here, Easter, Bonfire Night, Christmas, etc. that she can mark off how she's feeling as well. So it's basically a um, manipulative, manipulative kind of um, calendar as opposed to the, the written one. But it's, you know, it's good to have variety. So that's her daily calendars. Next thing we have is our yoga mat and she does yoga. We do yoga every morning. I have a channel on YouTube that I follow. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. It's called Cosmic Kids and we, I actually do it with her, I have my mat too. And we go through the whole, a little exercise, it's a story and everything else and um, then she does all the yoga moves along to the story. One of our favourites is the Hungry Caterpillar, my daughter absolutely loves that one. But I highly recommend that and it's good exercise, it's just a great way to start off the day. Okay, now moving on to literacy, we are doing Hooked on Phonics. Um, for now, later on in the year, possibly more towards September next year, I'm going to start all about reading, but I wanted to start with the Hooked on Phonics first, just basically because I think that that learning style will suit my daughter. She really loves the leap pad kind of uh, interactive videos and everything else, and this is basically a big part of it. You watch the video and it teaches you all everything you need to know. She already knows quite a lot with regards to her phonics, but so I, the reason I started off with the pre-K, just for partly for a refresh, but she does need... Um, assistance with rhyming and things like that so that'll cover everything along there you get the flashcards with it some books stickers who doesn't love stickers so i think she's gonna really enjoy starting with the hooked on phonics and it was an amazon special so you got this extra dvd with it as well the next one is hooked on phonics word families levels three and four so that's one and two which is age three and four so that's perfect for this year and then i got the second pack uh for next year because I was paying posters anyway, so I <laughs> might as well have gotten both. And I, I think, I do genuinely believe that she's going to really like this system. Anyway, so that's our reading. Then we've got loads of first readers to go with it. So we've got the Biff, Chip and Kipper set. And she's got a practice room phonics. This is the Oxford set. And then just a big stack of other ones there. And then she's got some I Can Read Poetry first readers as well. So she's all set for literacy, hopefully. 
Now moving on to maths, I decided to go with the Singapore Maths Programme. I'd read a lot about this particular programme and I really liked its philosophy and its teaching practice and everything else. And it's a system that's actually been adopted in primary schools over here anyway, so in a certain degree. So I think it's a good foundation for her. I particularly like how they present, it's such bright and colourful, but I particularly like how they present each activity so it's something that you do together with your child it's not a program that you can just sit them down and watch a dvd or something and then they can get on with it it's something that you are supposed to sit down with them one-to-one -one and interact because it is very hands-on so you have to read the little description at the bottom and it'll give you ideas as to how to present the information to the child and not so much that you sit and look at the book but that you find other items to bring into it so different manipulatives and different ways of just presenting the information to them but it's supposed to be a very good program and i have read and heard a lot of really good reviews about it so i'll see how we go with that so it is split into book a and book b so I think book A will be this year and then book B will be 2017 because it does look much more advanced. But it is very staged so you start off easy, getting a little bit more harder as it goes along and it is supposed to be a great programme as I said, particularly if you're starting off on this programme with them being young. Now we have some manipulatives to go with and also I already had most of these anyway but uh, Counting Bear family, and I've also got another family in there as well. There's cats and people in there too. She really loves these weights. A little balance scale to go with, and I really recommend this super sorting pack. It's so much fun. You can, they can organise due to colour, number, um, fruit type. My daughter really loves it, and also you could use the actual fruit for manipulatives as well, which is one of the things that we do. So that's our maths program. And continuing on, just a couple of extras that I got to complement. I couldn't think of the word then. <laughs> the Singapore Maths books. So I got the Kumon books. My numbers 1 to 30. Different activities that we can do together. And then the 1 to 120. This is, should have actually been with the literacy stuff, but it's alphabet type games. And then this first illustrative math dictionary. So it's going to be helpful as she gets older to have on hand and I really like how they have different methods to to explain so um, using diagrams numbers graphs charts all kinds of different number lines to help with, with the different type of learning styles that people have that's really cool you know moving on to handwriting I decided to go with the handwriting with that tears program I really enjoyed the reviews that I watched about it and the whole again the whole ethos and system for it in terms of it's very hands-on. So I got the pre-K teacher's guide, just some really good information there and guides to help you. And I got the My First School book. So this will be the first book that she'll do in at the beginning of the year. And it starts off very, very basic. And with that, if you notice on each sheet, so as you get into the handwriting section, there are diagrams to how to make the letters with wood pieces and I got the capital letter wood pieces set so again this is how it's very hands-on so she can actually make the shape of the letter using these wood pieces and it just makes it so much more fun rather than just trying to sit down and show her the book and her try and draw the letter and everything else and these capital letter cards go with it so she can make the shape on the capital letters and they also have on the back some additional information where they can again try to trace the letters and everything else I also got her the chalkboard, because if you see here, there's the chalkboard section, so she can actually try and trace the letter onto the chalkboard. And then they have the wet and dry technique, so she'll trace it with the little chalks, and then she can trace it with the little wet sponge. That's the, how it's called, the wet and dry technique. And also the little Play-Doh board, so she and the shapes, the letter cards are inside. They're actually they're not attached. So she can use Play-Doh to make the shapes. It's very hands-on and interactive, which I really like. And then for next year, unless we fly through this book much faster than I imagine, um, next, in 2017, this is the next book along for her. And again, I got the teacher's guide. Basically, because as I said, I was paying postage, so I thought I might as well go and get the next one up as well. So that's what we're doing for handwriting this year. Now moving on to science. So some of this is going to be for the, during the summer. So she's got her little Melissa and Doug binoculars, <laughs> really cute, and her little magnifying glass 
for us to do a little garden bug activity so she can go around having a look see what she can find in the garden and also the mini beast adventure which is pop and play and actually goes through the stages of a butterfly because she is going to do the live butterfly garden uh, experiment so basically what you do is you buy your pack which is this gives you a coupon for your caterpillars and then you send off to this company with your voucher to get your caterpillars they send them out in the post and then you can go through the whole experiment through the different life cycle and then let them all free at the end so it's gonna be so much fun I'm really excited to do this with her over the summer going along with this is her my first microscope so it's great because it's got the two eyepieces rather than just one. They're only being little still. So she's going to really enjoy looking at different things that she's found in the garden under her little microscope. Okay, so moving on into the rest of the year. We have got the Usborne Children's Encyclopedia. And I love the fact that it's got the QR links and it's also got internet links as well. So if something suddenly seems to catch her eye more than something else, then we can have a look a bit more about it over the internet and there's all kinds of things in there well it's an encyclopedia there's gonna be uh in terms of topics initially we are going to be doing space because it's something that really interests her and it's something that i am fascinated with anyway so that makes me better at teaching because i enjoy it too not that i don't teach if i don't like it but you know what i mean um so she's got a little space torch and she can project which she's going to really love. The, again, the Usborne. You'll see I've got a lot of Usborne books because I think they are really great. And this is A Look Inside Space and it's a lift the flap. And then we are going to be doing Animals too because again, that's another one of her interests. And again, this is it's all is internet linked too. So with it being so little, we're not. it's not pressured curriculum it's based on not that you know I'm saying it, a pressured curriculum is bad necessarily but I just think for for my child and what she likes she's going to really enjoy looking through the books we can read that read a bit more about it online we can do projects on it we can do arts we can do crafts there's just so much you can do um and bear in mind obviously she is four so it's not going to be it too intense but the thing with these books is they're going to last so what she can get out from them now at this age will vary from what she can get out of them in two to three years time so I think they're a really good investment and I'm really happy with everything that I've got for her then we have this my first book about our world again different systems in there that she can learn about and we have got Sea Inside Planet Earth, and again, that's got lifter flaps as well. She absolutely adores books, so I know she's going to be thrilled when she sees all these new books. And as I said, the ways that she can learn from them will vary. She gets older, so I'm really happy. Look inside our world. Again, another lifter flap book. And the main thing for next year is the 365 Science Activities. So it's a different experiment that you can do. For 365 days of the year <laughs> so my idea is is to let her peruse the book and pick out things that she wants to try and also if we're particularly doing that unit as well then we can do that but there's so many different experiments in here that she can do and it's usually things pretty much that you have around the house anyway there might be the odd thing that you need to go out and buy but generally speaking it's mostly things that you can do from things that you already have in the house so we're gonna love doing that and then the rest of the things are mainly books. So non-fiction, I think non-fiction is really important to read with your little ones. So we can do unit studies on those different topics, whatever she wants to do, crafts, art, reading a bit more about it, going on field trips to, the ver to see various different things. And then we've got these first fabulous facts. This is Ladybird, I really like these ones perfect little snippets of information that don't bog down too much but you can elaborate on and there's mini beasts dinosaurs and my body then we've got this wonder wise selection from the book people and there's all kinds of things in here so food chains build a house all about water my body 
I've got underneath the bed <laughs> a book about the earth beneath us. It's, it's so cool. Great illustrations. Perfect for her age. And as I said, she can get more of it as she gets older as well. So it's a vast array of all kinds of different topics. And then we've got some more Osborne unit study type ones. So tadpoles and frogs, reptiles, farm animals. So much to do and learn. And then later on in the year, or it might even expand over to 2017, a bit more about seeing inside your body. Because I wasn't planning on doing body for at least most of the year, but this was a bargain. It was on sale, so I decided to get it. And we'll see. I might start that unit sooner rather than later, but initially my plan was to do that later on in the year. So we'll see what happens. And then just a little science workbook. This year we are doing the Music Express curriculum. This is something that early years studies do um, as part of their national curriculum. And I really like it because it comes with a CD and it's a step-by-step -step kind of guide to, to incorporate it in various different ways into your daily life that's really fun for the children, which is the main reason you're doing this. <laughs> um, fun learning at the same time. And in terms of instruments, I am going to attempt <laughs> to teach her the recorder. It's going to be really fun. So she's got her my first recorder in here, and I also got her a little book to go along with that to, to help her learn how to use the recorder. She's very little yet, so it's just going to be a lot of fun. Um, but that's the whole point. And she also has a, a little instrument set with various different instruments in that she can play along with. So the various different activities that we're going to be doing. For music. Okay, moving on to arts and crafts, this is something that's really popular in my house. My daughter absolutely adores doing arts and crafts and I really do too, so it works perfectly. Um, 365 things to make and do, Osborne activities, so again it's free choice, she can look through and pick something that she'd like to make that day and generally speaking there are things that you have on hand so it's quite easy to do. And then 365 things to do with paper and cardboard. So I love Pinterest, I have tons of Pinterest boards, but I'm a book person, I like physical books um, to have on hand as well. And obviously it's a lot easier for her to look through a book than it is for me to to show her Pinterest. <laughs> so there we go, that's what we've got for those. I've got another one of this, these as well, these fingerprint activities and another Osborne books with the little pads on the side and it just gives them ideas of, of ways to do it. You make different patterns, designs, everything else and I've got an animals one as well. Um, my very first art book, again, different crafts for her to do and have fun with. And I think some of those are, are themed as well. And then the outdoor art room, winter and autumn. So I got these for myself really for reference for us to plan different activities that we can do. It's always nice to have additional ideas on hand. And I only got autumn and winter to see how I like the book. They do do spring and summer as well. So if I like those, I'll order those ones next time as well. And then we've just got an array of different activities. So magic painting book, and then obviously being Christmas within the foreseeable future, <laughs> I got a Christmas themed one as well. And then we've just got an array of cutting and pasting because she's really gotten into using her scissors now. And there's various different activities in here that she can have fun with cutting things out. And then let's stick it and paste. This one's food themed. And I thought that'd be really useful for when we do a food unit. And then there's animals as well. And then another Kumon book. I really like these Kumon books. And this is my book of easy crafts. Again, things that she can pick and decide what she wants to do. And then over the summer, some more activities for us to do. So she's got a butterfly uh, wind chime set. It can go coincide with her butterfly garden science activities. She's got some little princess peg dolls that she can make. 3D animal lanterns. And then we've got some 50 rainy day activities, in case we get bored. And a Christmas activity type placemat. All kinds of different things in there, art related and, and otherwise. So we're going to be doing Spanish and Welsh. I speak both of them and it's something that we've been doing as we've been going along anyway. But I just wanted to get something a little bit more formal this year. But it's fun because it's a let's sing and learn in Spanish that comes with a disc and then we can
practice singing the songs together. She's also got a thousand words in Spanish book as well that we can go through and read together. Um, so that's going to be fun for her, hopefully. <laughs> For geography we are having a little subscription box sent out so the first one you get a little suitcase and all different and every every month you get a different um statue or the diagram or craft or something related to the different countries that you're visiting and a little passport for you to stamp and everything else it's gonna be so much fun and then to go with that i got her the picture atlas again uh collins and oops I nearly ripped it then <laughs> that's a very very colorful maps in there with different themes and at the back the thing that I almost ripped but thankfully didn't is a large world map I have actually seen a one that you can actually scrunch up which looks so cool I don't know where this person got it from I saw it on YouTube I definitely need to find one of those because um, with this being paper it makes you a little bit nervous but she's generally really good with books so um, but if you can get one of those scrunchable world maps <laughs> let me know where you get them from I haven't got the little subscription yet, subscription box, so I can't show you, but when I do actually get it, I'll do a little review on them because I think it's going to be really fun and how we enjoy it. There are some other geography type theme stuff throughout, and I'm going to show you at the end all miscellaneous books that I've got for different things, and I'm sure there'll be a few bits and pieces in there as well to go along with geography. Another one of my favourite subjects is history. I'm hoping my daughter's going to really enjoy it too. So we're going to start off with The History of Britain. And this is another Osborne book again. Lift the flap. Go to all different periods and everything pretty much that happened that's of any relevance. So we're going to really enjoy going through that. And specifically I'm going to be doing a field trip to a castle in the first half of the year, curriculum wise. And I got her my very first Osborne Castles book. So it's something that we can go through and read together before we go on our field trip. And then on the way there, she's got this Castles activity wipe clean book to do in the car because it's a bit of track. So that's what we're going to start off with initially with history. We've also got the encyclopedia, obviously, that we can go through. And if anything specifically sparks our interest, then that's what I'll be more inclined to start off with next. I'm thinking Egypt and the pyramids is something that she's going to really be interested in. Um, so we're going to likely go on to that afterwards but we'll see what is her preference and what she's expressed expressing interest in as we go along but i thought we'd start off with the history of britain first and it's useful because we can go on field trips with relating to this book not just to a castle but you know to the other kind of field trip activity activities that we can get ideas from from the history of britain book now this last section is mis miscellaneous things that don't necessarily fit into one category but just things that I thought I'd show you because it's something that I really think are good qu quality and worth getting. Um, I'm not going to show everything because there are other things as well that I've got but this is just a selection. So she's got this little sticker scenes book. She loves sticking as any toddler would. There's Nemo in there. There's Doc McStuff in Minnie and Jake and the Neverland Parrots. Then she's got a little first 100 animals sticker book that she can have fun with. And this is a Pretty Books album, and I love Pretty Books. They have amazing quality books. Now, if you don't know of Julia Donaldson, then where have you been? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Julia Donaldson is amazing. Um, we've got so many of her different books. But what I love about these is stories that she specifically really likes. I can get the activity book for. So this is Tales from Acorn Wood. And there's all kinds of things that she can do in there. Room on the Broom. Snail and the Whale and What the Ladybird Heard. So I love the fact that we can read the story, which we already have read millions of times, but we can read the story and then I can actually get the activity book out. And we can do it together, we can stick, we can talk about different things that she liked in the story. This is another pretty one. This is Early Learning Workbook. And I, my daughter and I are not 100% on workbooks in terms of that she gets bored with them after a while, so we don't tend to do them too much. But... They're always nice to have on hand and if she's feeling, if she has to be in the mood and if she's in the mood then she'll happily do one. Say if we're in the car or something like that and we're driving, well she's obviously not driving but it's a long journey or something along those lines. It's something to keep her entertained so that's why I get them um, but as I said she's not really one for just sitting down and going through a book like that but it is always good to have on hand and that might change, she might get more into it doing that so it's nice to have that as an option. This little felt picture play set. Um, for her to have fun with and this dinosaur bumper sticker set 
I've been collecting the curriculum now for about a year and a half. I've only get my items from two stores. I'll talk about that at the end. But I'm just going to show you a selection of different things. I'm not going to show you everything that I've got because I'll be here all day. But I'll just show you a few different types of items that I thought were really interesting. Great value for money that might give you some ideas if you're looking to. Okay, continue on. So we are going to be doing a lot of baking because it's something we both really enjoy to do together. So I've got here my first picture cookbook. So I like to do um, Mon Montessori type activities. So these are really big, good with that she can follow the pictures as well so she can see the little girl. Is that a girl? <laughs> yeah. The little girl making the um, different whatever it is that she's doing. And they're really easy recipes as well. So it's something that you can she can do adding the ingredients on her little Montessori tray and then obviously I can do the oven side of things. And then my children's book of baking bread, again something that we can do together and have fun with. And along those lines is a gardening for beginners. That's, that's something that we'll probably start this summer as well. Um, we can go through with her bugs and everything else that she's going to be doing this summer. She likes watering the plants. Okay, now the rest of it, as I, get, as I said, is miscellaneous type thing. So my giant activity books, there's all kinds of different things in there, puzzles-wise. And what I te I'll plan to do with these types of things is rather than give her the whole book and say, here you go, have fun with that, is to actually take a, a page out um, and then do, as I said, like a Montessori type activity. So put it on a tray with, for example, if we were doing this, I'd get her shapes out. She's got different shapes, magnetic shapes. So she could have a magnetic shape board with this activity and have fun with that and then I did have I forgot to put that in the literacy thing the Osborne start to read pack as well and you get the little chart too to go with and these are again are pretty books these are, this one is sight words and pen control type activity she does she, she's quite she quite likes these pen activities um, so I think she'll really enjoy those and then we have got a phonics book and a starting school. This is just covers all kinds of different things in here, different activities that she can have a little play around with. And as I said, I'm very easy with these sorts of books. I'm not. I don't like sit down and expect her to do page after page. I don't expect her to do any. But if she wants to have a look, give her the option. And there's some great pictures in here to have fun with. This is another Osborne big book of things to spot. She adores doing these. But what I really like about them is that it actually specifies how many of the items there are as well. So she gets different educational elements out of it rather than just looking for the actual item. And she loves, loves these books. We've got quite a few different types. And then this is just a floor pad activity that she can do while she's just sitting on the floor. And... There's all different colours and numbers and all kinds of things in there. My first thousand words in English, because I'm sure there's things that she doesn't know yet. That we can read through together. And then a couple of these dot to dot type books that she can have fun with. This is cool because it's a storybook and a double sided jigsaw as well. And she really loves doing her jigsaws. I like, and I like the fact that she can actually colour on one side and make it her own. And then just a final few things. This is a Shine a Light book from Osborne. So basically, if you have a torch on the specific pages, it reveals extra little magical things for them to have a look at, which I thought was really cool. So that would be great because it's winter themed. And then we've got some more of these Kumon books. So this is Mazes. She can have fun with that. And then Rhyming Words. I really like that they're staged so she can start off and then if it gets a little bit difficult we can put it away and then she can try again. That was her recorder book that I mentioned before. And again another dot to dot seashore type activity. And a sea and spell puzzle. Again she's really into her puzzles. And then just a couple more of these little dot to dot type books. This one's for four year olds and then an alphabet. Dot to dot. So that's everything. I will. Sh I've got a few just regular books, but I'm just going to do a, a separate book haul about those. That's everything in terms of my curriculum that I've got so far. I get my most of my books from the book people. You get amazing discounts from them, and if you shop when they have one of their sales, which they often do throughout the year, then even better. And I also got things from Amazon as well. 
and if you do those uh, different companies offer if you fill out surveys you can get coupons for Amazon I save all those up and then I can just shop away well within reason <laughs> and yeah that's everything I hope it gives you some ideas and uh, I will do a mid curriculum review to let you know how it's going how we're using things as I said this is a pre-k four year so it's not really going to be very intense she doesn't have to officially do any kind of official schooling until 2017 but a lot of the things we're just going to make a start on see how she progresses I can get a firm idea of her different learning styles I already pretty know how she learns so far but you know I can progress with that so that it went to come 2017 when she is supposed to attend school then I'll know exactly where to go what she's enjoying and we'll have a hopefully a really fun time so yeah that's everything thanks for watching take care see you soon